So as we're aware, in the digital technologies curriculum, we have three different uh, thinking methodologies. Uh, we have design thinking, computational thinking, and system thinking. So in this presentation, I'm just going to speak about system thinking. So when we think about the system, uh, now if you're going to Google this, you, you'll find that there may be a different sort of variations for system thinking. But really what we're concerned about is the system and how the user interacts with that system. So for example, when we think about our systems, we have inputs and we have outputs. Now the user will input through some sort of action, uh, generally through some sort of hardware peripheral like a keyboard or a mouse. The components within that system will then build up and, and, and interpret that data and then will output of that system. The user then will process what they see, they'll interpret it and they'll react in a certain way. So if we look at a, a definition of what system thinking is, system thinking is a holistic approach to identification and solving of problems with the parts and the components of the system. Their interactions and interrelations are analysed individually to see how they influence the whole system. So as I mentioned before, we're looking at the whole system and how those parts interact um, to interpret data. So if we look at our system, we have the inputs and we have the outputs. So this is the simplest level that we would look at a system. Um, the inputs would allow you to input information from the outside world, as I mentioned before, through keyboards, cameras or microphones. And then we can output those um, through monitors, speakers, printers, projectors, and then inside the system, all this information is processed. And as we know, computers are actually good for, for one other thing, and that's the storage. So as we input our data and the, and the system processes it, we also store information. And this is through both writing information to a hard drive and also reading information. Now, if we look at our primary curriculum, uh, there's, there's various levels like all things. So we're not expecting that uh, a pre-primary student would, would know all the hardware components. And we have these elaborations which allow you to sort of break down and realize what you need to teach at certain levels. So I'll go through and show you some examples of different activities and ways that you could um, bring about the, the knowledge throughout the, the curriculum and get the students to engage in it. So at a year one, year two level, what we're looking at for the students to do is to start to identify and categorize. So we could start off with your hardware and your software. Students will, will be aware of, of what hardware is and what software is and be able to categorize the two. Uh, so if you scan this QR code or, or use the bit.ly link uh, down the bottom there, there's a little activity uh, which is a, a keynote presentation which allows students to use their camera to identify what hardware is and what software is. Now you could do this in any sort of uh, application. You could use Pic Collage or, or um, simply just use PowerPoint or, or OneNote and, and get the students to take photos and, and collect that information. At a year three level, we're looking to, to look a little bit further into our system. We want to start to actually look inside the system and look at the different components within the system. Now, this is where it becomes a little bit more difficult. It, it involves um, a lot more terminology and, a lot, and it starts to merge towards computer science as a subject. So if we look at this little uh, diagram which I've created of, of Homer Simpson, we like to often use this metaphor. And this metaphor changes slightly, and I certainly um, changed my metaphor from, from what is traditional sense, but allows students to visualize how the components and how the systems work in, in the same sort of metaphor that you would for a, for a human body. So for example, uh, we have, as humans have our long-term memory and our short-term memory. We have visual inputs, we have audio outputs, we have a communication backbone through our uh, spinal cord, and we also have our heart, which, which pumps the blood throughout our body. As we know, if our heart stops, 
then the rest of our body ceases to, to work. So computer systems work in much the same way. We have a communication backbone, uh, which is the motherboard, and all the different components plug into this communication backboard, uh, backbone. We then have a central processing unit. This is what interprets our data and decides what to do with it. Are we going to input it? Are we going to output it? Are we going to send it off to long-term or short-term storage? We have our short-term memory, which is our random access memory. So it's also called RAM. And um, you'll, you'll notice this being used when you uh, are working on, say, a Word document and you haven't saved the document and the power, you lose power to your computer, you lose that data. So it's only on short-term memory. You would then have to click File, Save As, and that would then save it to your long-term memory. You'd choose where to save on your computer. And that means that it's there in your long-term storage. Computers also have visual processing units as well. Uh, much like a CPU, but these are dedicated towards graphics processing. So these come in the form of a video card, which is what you plug your, you know, your HDMI cable into to connect to your printer or an external monitor. And they also have dedicated sound cards or sound chips, which allow you to process the output or, or microphone inputs. So at this level in year three and four, we need to start to understand how a system uh, comes together and, and the different components within the system. Again, there's another act activity there for your students to take a picture of themselves and then to analyze and annotate uh, the different parts of the body. In year five and six, we start to get a little bit more complicated. And you may have seen this problem before because I've used it before in computational thinking. But we can, again, we can start to use metaphors to allow students to understand how networks and different systems. So once students understand the, the, the desktop machine, they need to under, also understand how machines inter, interrelate to each other. So we, we often use uh, local area networks for our schools to access our file storage or connect uh, particularly to our, our, our learning management system. But we also have our wide access networks, which is connecting us to the internet and to each other, essentially. So I like to use this little little um, logic grid here. And uh, we've got a little problem here where we have uh, taxi drivers and they need to follow a certain route. Sometimes they can go down a one-way street. Sometimes they can go down a two-way street. And we need to figure out how... Um, we can get to each of the different parts. So for example, here we have um, X can go to Y and Y can go to X and Y can go to Z, but Z cannot go back to Y. So we can then figure out and work out our logic table. So if we look at more a more complex um, logic table, for example, this one here, we can see that B can go to everything, but uh, everything can't go back to B. So we've got some one-way streets there. A can't go to B, but A can go to E, E can go to A, and etc. So we can start to begin to break down these problems and figure out where within our system each of our uh, roads can go to. So we can apply this to the logic within a network. So your network managers within schools will actually work out where each uh, where the traffic can go. So for example, if we had um, intruders from outside of the school, we can decide we don't want them to be able to access our servers. We may also apply these same rules to students, but, but perhaps we want our, our staff to be able to access them, or we want administrators to be going down a two-way road. So these similar logic tables are built up within our switches inside our school. So this gives you a very basic level of knowledge of, of what's expected and the elaborations between all of uh, the uh, curriculum parts within uh, systems thinking. Uh, I'd also like to uh, credit uh, Mitzi Phoebe for, for her work on this and some of the examples uh, throughout this presentation.